Hey there, everyone. My name is Nate Pagel. I'm the CEO and founder of Medifies. Uh, show of hands. Everyone can put their hand up if they want to. Who's been in a hospital waiting room before? Anybody out there? Really? Really? Come on. Everyone, right? So keep your hand up if you had an awesome experience in the waiting room. Nobody, right? You. All right. All right. This product is not for you. Okay, but for everybody else here that didn't have a great time in the waiting room, what Medifies does is Medifies notifies families of updates in the surgical theater of their loved one in surgery. So it gets that to your phone. So this is what the product looks like on the phone. We have a different product for the hospital where the updates come from, obviously. And a little bit about our team. Oh, that looks a little serious. There we go. Um, so my background is that I've started uh, seven different software companies in San Francisco, uh, New York, and uh, Austin, Texas. And uh, some of them have been acquired, as you can see, but I won't go into that too much. This is my first digital health startup. But everybody else on my team has had a lot of 15 plus years of experience doing tech, sales, and, and medicine uh, that uh, helps me out and makes this product a little bit better. So the big problem is, everybody here knows, but five million people today are in a hospital waiting room. And that doesn't count the 10 million plus people that are everywhere else in the world that are, want to get the updates as well, right? Um, and so why do hospitals care about this? Everyone here gets the problem, but why do hospitals care? So th there's a lot of miscommunication that happens. There's a lot of inefficiencies in the system between the doctors and the staff and the nurse. Uh, the nurses can embellish stuff, uh, which can be cause of a malpractice suit. And really, the hospitals, modern hospitals, especially in America, and I think everywhere, are trying to really connect to the community. Uh, so they want to have more people involved in their day-to-day -day operations and what they're doing in terms of outreach. So that's the big thing uh, for us. Uh, but the cost, in terms of ROI, is 100 minutes uh, per operating room per shift uh, are wasted with trying to find doctors, trying to find nurses, trying to find family members. So it gets rid of that problem, and that's a big cost for a hospital. And so what I mean here is we're the family. All right, so we're all about communicating to families. All digital health companies in general are about providers or payers or patients, right? Everybody ignores the family, but it takes uh, a lot of people to actually make somebody better, and we've all been there before. So what do we do? So we provide standardized updates, things like the anesthesia has started, a patient is in the operating room, things that happen for every single procedure so nobody will make any mistakes. And it's a SaaS platform. We sell it to hospitals. Obviously, it's free to users. Um, and what's interesting to me is that the marketing team sees the most value. Because every procedure, every patient, they get 10 or so family members signed up, right? They get their name, phone number, email address. They really bring them into the community and send them messages afterwards to take care of the patient. Um, so it really quickly scales our digital community. This is what the product looks like, a few different screens. As you can see, surgery and product in progress, surgeon has started the procedure, really basic stuff that an eight-year-old would understand. And then on the, on, the, on the hospital side, this is what they're looking at, all the procedures for the day, and they're just tapping a button. There's no two-way communication, there's no typing, right? So they can't make any mistakes. This stuff is all pre-approved per hospital. So here's some money that we're gonna make over the year. We're in three hospitals starting in January. They're all part of one hospital system. That's an 89 hospital system. And we're also talking to, to uh, Johns Hopkins and some other people uh, right now in Stanford, uh, Duke. Um, but this is what's one thing that's kind of interesting. So Facebook has all of your family connections, or some of them anyway, if your mom's on Facebook, right? And some of the uh, electronic record systems like Epic and McKesson have your health data, but there's nothing connecting the two of them, thank God, right? But what we do is we, we connect the family data, the family relationships to procedures that are happening in the hospital. So if you put our information on top of the MR information, you get a broad set of connections between families and, and their histories. Um, so this is our first product of what I just talked about. We're gonna be involved in the whole perioperative cycle in terms of communicating again with family and not with patients uh, because the family is gonna take care of it and everyone's kind of ignoring that part of the puzzle, which is all of you that raised your hand. Uh, we've been around for a little bit. Uh, we're raising some money, et cetera, et cetera. That's our product. Thanks very much. Hi, Nate. Hey. Nice to see you. Um, tell us a little bit about how you protect patient privacy yeah. um, during this process. Well, it's different for different countries. In the States, obviously, we've designed it for that, so there's a thing called HIPAA. Um, so what's interesting about HIPAA is that it protects the patient information. The patient can talk, if, if you're my sister, I can tell you whatever I want about my health, right? So I invite you to this process, so it saves part of that problem. In addition, though, all of the information that we have is not personally identifiable. So the, the, the family side of the product doesn't have to be HIPAA compliant. The other side does, because we have the patient's email.
email address. Uh, but we never share any of that information. All the stuff is generic. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Can you cover the revenue model real quick? Yeah, it's 115. It's about, on average, 115 thousand dollars per hospital per year. So it's SaaS software. They buy it monthly, or it's it's 10 percent off with one year, 20 percent off for three years. The first deal we have is a three-year deal. And last comment. It seems like you're overcomplicating a little bit with this whole family graph. Yeah. That, that kind of muddies the presentation. It's pretty straightforward SaaS presentation. Right. So. A little curious about that. Yeah. Um, well, so the longer play, there's some value to that because no one has that data. If you ask, if you, if you ask the data, data people, particularly the academic hospitals, they've been trying to connect that for a long time, and they just don't have it. None of the EMR vendors have it, right? So to add that information to that to that system makes a lot of sense in the long term. That's just a longer play for us, but it just makes sense in terms of population health because family relation is the number one predictor of of I would, of I would cut it from the presentation for the moment. Yeah. It kind of muddies yeah. things. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Awesome, and that is the time. Thanks, everyone. Please give a round of applause for Medifies.